Toledo, a World Heritage Site, represents a melting pot of cultures that have all left their mark throughout the city. Its oriental appearance is due to the earth color of its bricks and tiles, and the Arabic layout of its streets. Its unique position on a rock surrounded by a river in the shape of a horseshoe has protected its ancient skyline over the centuries. And yes, to truly enjoy Toledo, you must know its history. At the same time, to be in Toledo helps you profoundly feel, in the footprints upon the stones, the pasts of Toledo's people. Toledo, prodigious harmony of towers and silhouettes that men created without knowing it, on the hill bordered by the Tagus. The ancient past of Toledo is unknown, but it is already mentioned by the historian Tito Livio as the most important city of Carpetania, conquered by the Romans in the second century BC. The Roman Toletum came to have an aqueduct, bridge, circus, amphitheater, temples, thermal baths, and wall. The Galliana Road that went from Merida to Zaragoza and later Gaul passed through Toledo. Next to it, two colossal works of Roman engineering crossed the Tagus River, almost parallel, about 70 meters high. The Alcantara Bridge, still standing after numerous reconstructions, and an aqueduct that brought water to the city from almost 40 kilometers away via an incline, and from which a buttress and sections of the channel are still visible today. Once in the city, the clean waters were channeled and distributed to different points. One of its deposits within the city was called the Hercules Caves, already explored since ancient times. The Roman Bridge of Alcantara was the only one that the city had for many centuries. It was rebuilt by Abderrahman III in the 10th century, who also ordered the construction of the castle of St. Servando for the city protection. The enormous central arch saves the riverbed, the sides being mere spillways, one of them now blocked. After an impressive flood of the Tagus, King Alfonso X had to rebuild the bridge in the 13th century, adding defensive towers on both sides, of which only the interior remains. With Toledo in the hands of Christian kings, the castle of St. Servando was handed over to the Cluny in order to watch over and help fend off the Amoravid attacks. Later, it passed into the hands of the Templars and, once it lost its defensive function, it remained abandoned for a long time. After several restorations, it currently serves as a student residence. El Greco immortalized his profile next to the Alcantara Bridge in his fascinating Toledo at the Metropolitan of Museum of Art in New York City. In the middle of the 6th century, when the Roman Empire was already defeated, Toledo became the capital of the Visigoth Kingdom. The Visigoths were people of Germanic origin that came from the east and entered the peninsula after having settled 1st century in Toulouse before they were expelled by the Franks. The Visigoth monarchy lasted in the peninsula almost two centuries and it was not hereditary. Because of this, the threat of conspiracy was constant. Dethronement by force began to be called Gothic Ghoulish Fascination. The Visigoths celebrated in Toledo numerous councils where they debated legal issues about the relationship between church and state. The religious unity of the kingdom was achieved during the Third Council after King Recaredo officially converted to Christianity. In the 7th century, Wamba reinforces the walls to the north of the city, the most vulnerable because they had no river surrounding them. But this did not prevent the Muslims from occupying Toledo in the next century, after the nobles had left the city. Later, the kings of Castile and Leon declared themselves descendants of the Visigothic nobility. Mudajar art uses simple elements easily found in the environment. Brick and masonry for walls and structures, wood beneath tile for the roofs, 
and carved plaster and tiles for the interior decoration. This was called curved masonry. It's made from stones that are uncut and uncarved on one side, then joined by mortar, forming walls crossed by horizontal rows of bricks that give cohesion to the structure. The Mudejar towers have a square floor plan and several sections with minimal holes down the tower to illuminate the staircase and big holes above to let out the sound of the bells. Many Mudejar towers of Toledo had originally been minarets from mosques. In Toledo, the towers of St. Leocadia, St. Roman, St. Miguel, and St. Tomé stand out. The use of the horseshoe arch in doors and windows as a separation of naves from columns, as well as in decorations, such as blind arches repeated in their various forms, simple, pointed, polylobed, or interlaced, are characteristic of Hispanic Arabic art and the subsequent Mudejar art. The horseshoe arch had already been used by the Visigoths, although less pronounced. It has the advantage in that its formworks can be held within the arch itself without needing to lean on the ground. The Mudejar covers are made of tile and multi-roof. They're supported by wooden frames, which are usually assembled with jointed rafters, sometimes with braces and, as a ceiling, coffered in prodigiously worked wood. The interior Mudejar decoration consists of plaster panels carved with geometric or epigraphic tracings that are attached to the walls. In Spain, tracings also include naturalist flora. The polychrome Mudejar plasterwork offers an impression of luxury linked to the art of good work, not to the intrinsic value of the materials. The facades of the Mudejar houses and palaces are simple and austere with light entering the interior patios, which preserve privacy in the midst of such a motley farmhouse. In the Muslim mentality, the street was not a public space, but only a transitory place, just to access the doors of the houses. For this reason, many streets have no exit. The Muslim layout, labyrinthine and full of walkways, remains today in the old town of Toledo. Although the Mudejar has left works in many parts of the peninsula, Toledo is the Mudejar city par excellence due to the dominance of this style in houses and religious and civil monuments. On this lattice of oriental aspect emerge the Gothic pinnacles of the cathedral and of San Juan de los Reyes and the great Renaissance Toledo works are engraved, the hospitals of Santa Cruz and Tavera and the omnipresent Alcazar. The synagogues of Santa Maria la Blanca and del Transito, the expansion of the mosque Christ of Light from its Islamic core, the emblematic doors of the sun, Alcantara and Alfonso VI, as well as most of the medieval convents and churches in Toledo, are Mudejar. The Church of Santiago de la Raval was built in the 12th and 13th centuries on an old mosque, taking advantage of its nine spaces. A transept was added and the aisles were erected with Mudejar Gothic arches and rose windows at high altitude. At the head, three Mudejar Romanesque apses were added with blind arcades. Its tower was exempt. In the roof, there is coffering of jointed rafters, from the 15th century, and in the Greater Chapel, a plateresque altarpiece from the 16th century. It is the best preserved Mudejar church in Toledo. We meet it as we enter through the Bisagra door. The Church of Salvador is another of the artistic treasures that show the superposition of cultures through the centuries. Outside, we see Visigoth stones used to decorate the minaret of the mosque. It has three aisles separated by whitewashed horseshoe arches with reused Roman and Visigoth capitals and Roman column shafts. 
serving the function of a column there is the famous Visigoth pilaster with gospel scenes carved on their faces in the nave has been restored the altarpiece from the 16th century of Nicholas de Vergara the elder and annexed is the private chapel of Santa Catalina late 15th century at the back of the church you can visit the remains of the 11th century mosque with horseshoe arches on three columns with two Roman capitals and one Visigoth. The Church of San Andres, Mudejar of the 12th century, has a cover of Almohad tradition. Inside a mix of everything, pointed horseshoe arches, nave covered with Mudejar armor, ribbed vaults, late Gothic with Mucarnas and another Visigothic pilaster. The main chapel has three splendid altar pieces by Juan de Borgoña and his disciple Comantes. In its crypt appeared more than 70 mummies decades ago whose origin remains unknown. The Fuensalida Palace of the 15th century, built in a Mudejar style, has a beautiful cloister with plastered brick pillars and wooden footings decorated with plaster work. The Church of Santo Tomé is well known for its beautiful Mudejar tower, although it is even more so for the painting of El Greco, the burial of the Lord Orgaz, made for this place. The Church of San Miguelato, of Visigoth origin, was later a mosque and later belonged to the Knights Templar, along with the surrounding houses. The current structure is from the 13th century, with three aisles and a transept. It was reformed in the 17th century by Monegro and contains a Baroque altarpiece with paintings by Claudio Coelho. Its slender Mudejar tower stands out from afar. The old Basilica of Santa Leocadia is located in the low fertile plain, in the place of a Visigoth church of the 7th century where councils were held. According to tradition, the holy martyr of the Roman persecutions was buried in that place, whose relics were sent to Asturias after the Arab invasion and returned to the city with great ceremony in the presence of Felipe II. Rebuilt in the 13th century in Mudejar style, of which only the apse remains with four levels of blind arches. The Palace of Galeana from the Upper Fertile Plain inherited the name of one of the palaces of the Alfisen. There is evidence that in the Taifa era there were botanical gardens described as paradisiacal in Islamic texts, but there is no evidence that King Al Mamun lived there. The reformed Mudejar Palace that we see now corresponds to the 13th and 14th centuries with remains of original plaster work. The decorative arts of medieval Toledo, carpentry, tile work, and the forge are also Mudejar, as well as the decoration of metal. The Damascene embeds ornaments of noble metal such as gold to iron or steel objects to give a luxurious appearance. It has been practiced since antiquity, but in the High Middle Ages it was relegated to the area of Byzantine influence, including Damascus, from which it acquired its name. The base metal is scratched with a burin, making the pattern on which the thread is embedded in sheets of gold. Afterwards, it is paved in a chemical bath at a very high temperature, leaving the metal black and the gold shiny once polished. It arrived in Toledo with the Arabs and its apogee is linked to the manufacture of knives as decoration. The Damascene work continues to be handmade. 